Ha! Do we have everyone back? Yay! Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Learning Space. I am uh, your co-host, Nicole Gallucci, postdoc with CosmoQuest. Uh, I'm working at the lovely STEM Center at SIUE. And my co-host is down on the other end there, Georgia Bracey. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And we have special guest Morgan Warner with us today. Hello. Hi. So we are going to show you how awesome and amazing NASA Wavelength is because mm -hmm. it is one of my favorite tools um, for astronomy education. Uh, yeah. So for this uh, show, we have a couple places you can comment, but I do strongly suggest you all use the Q&A app because that is probably the first and easiest thing I will see. So uh, we got a good evening from Nancy Graziano. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> She was uh, another Geek Girl Con attendee. <laughs> I've seen that in the pre show. Oh, I did not know that. Uh, and yeah, so if you can use the QA app, I will see those comments. I will try and check the um, Google Plus pages where this goes down, but uh, there's a good chance I'll miss it <laughs> or it'll take too long. Um, same thing with the YouTube comments. Try that, but QA app is the best. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to move towards that. Um, Ooh, that's weird. So go ahead, uh, send us your comments and questions throughout the show, and we can uh, answer them for you. Uh, what I wanted to show you today was um, for a little hands-on demo, and this was a cute little kids thing that we used to play with. I don't know if you <laughs> had these. Um, it's like the little, I don't even know what to call What? what is, I don't even know what these are called, if it has a name. It's wrong. I uh, have no idea what it is either, right? I know. <laughs> it's so good of game, and 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 you um, this is a constellation themed one, and I found this on NASA Wavelength actually. And uh, what you do is you have somebody pick a maybe pick a favorite constellation, or um, pick or pick a number. I think you pick a number. Pick a so number. Okay. Numbers around the side. So Georgia, pick a number. Okay. What do I get? Five. Four. Okay. Five. <laughs> so I go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, we have a couple of constellations. We have Leo, Pegasus, Scorpius, and the Big Dipper. Okay, Leo. You like Leo? That's easy. L E O, and then. Oh, I should have picked a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you can pick either side. Do you want? Do you want the bull? If you want, what's on the other side? Oh, I got swan. What else is in there? Yeah. Okay. Bull. Bull. Bull for Taurus. So I pull this up. And this shows a bit of a star chart. So on the other side of this is a star chart. And uh, the one that's highlighted, so this is supposed to come in color, but I have a black and white printer, is the Big Dipper. <laughs> so now you do this outside at night with a red flashlight, supposedly. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> or else I will yell at you to leave my observatory. Uh, and you have to point out the Big Dipper, find the Big Dipper in the sky. And you've got a whole bunch of constellations on this star map you could do it for. And they have them for a whole bunch of different months. And I'm not going to post the link because yeah. I'm going to tell you all to go to NASA Wavelength and search for Starfinder. <laughs> see it in color, go to NASA Wavelength. <laughs> yes, see it in color, go to NASA Wavelength, and that will take you to the site. So it's a cute little hand, if somebody remember, oh, <laughs> it's called a cootie catcher, according to Dixon Book. <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing this with it's colors hilarious. and numbers and stuff like that. Um, I believe it. Yes. Um, sure looking at uh, so so this is this is your it's called a star finder, but you could call it a constellation catcher <laughs> instead of cootie catcher. Um, it's uh, I would totally hand these out to. Uh, in fact, I may start making these and hand them out to the little kids that come to my observing sessions because sometimes they see one thing, they see another thing, and then they get bored and run around. So this is something they could play with um, with each other and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Easy. Them learn the constellations. Mm -hmm. Simple thing, they love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would be fun. So that was my little <laughs> demo I wanted to show you. Um, looking at more comments, mm. Guido Bibra says, getting the, can't get the stream to load properly, something's buggy mm. on our side. Uh, YouTube was down earlier today. Briefly, um, so I don't know if they're having. I mean, we've got a few viewers. So I don't know if we're having if they're having problems. I would say check the um, if if you're trying to watch it embedded on the CosmoQuest event page. I got a server error trying to do that, 
So um, there's a link to the other event page uh, in the description. Try that link and try playing it there. Um, if not, you can go to cosmoquest.org slash hangouts. Hangouts starts with a capital H, uh, and it's embedded in YouTube. It, the YouTube is embedded there as well um, if you're having trouble. with this. I, I realize I'm saying this, and if someone's having trouble, they can't hear it, but maybe the rest of you guys can comment back to Guido because I, <laughs> I don't have the Q&A window open for me. Um, so, so there you go. So maybe we'll share that out, and uh, I'll share that link out on the pages because... I don't know. YouTube was having some fuckiness today. Ugh. All right. So that's out of the way. Uh, try, try to get some administrative stuff out of the way. Let's get to the uh, main attraction of this program, which is NASA Wavelength. So, Morgan. Uh, woo! <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're all excited about it. We're all fans. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about NASA Wavelength and, and kind of where the idea came from and how it got started? Sure. So... NASA Wavelength is a pretty unique site in that it is an online catalog of all of the educational resources created through NASA SMD funding. And all of our resources go through a peer review process. So we have educators and scientists who take a look at each resource as they're submitted for review, um, let us know whether or not those resources are suitable for the classroom, you know, and the science is accurate, yeah. <laughs> and that they'll be good and easy for teachers to use. Um, we started, the concept for the website came around, um, back in the day, there was a system called Delisi that was used to kind of store the, um, the resources, and it wasn't, we wanted something, like, super, super cool. And so we came up with the concept of developing a website that was really user-friendly, that was really interactive, really visual, and allowed people to really engage with our resources and, you know, would kind of lead you through and make you want to find more resources and make you want to, you know, see what was the next thing around the corner, what else could you click on. Mm -hmm. And so we developed this really awesome website and now we're at a point where we keep adding features to make it more interactive so that it's not just oh you can go and find resources it's oh you can create your entire you can create a list of resources a custom mm -hmm. list just for you that wow. you can use in the classroom mm -hmm. yeah that's a new feature we'll go over that okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're super excited <laughs> <laughs> see that before wait a minute not live yet. <laughs> okay. Whoop. Spoiler. All right. Keep going. Good. Good. So yeah, I mean that that's where the concept came from, and um, we do have some things on the site uh, that are helpful for teachers as far as you know. We understand that if you want to use a resource in the classroom, it has to align to certain standards, and we have. I know Nicole wants me to go over this. The uh, strand maps that um, shows you alignments with AAAS uh, benchmarks. And we're also in the process of aligning things to um, next-gen standards as well. Yeah. So it's we're still doing a lot of work on the site. You know, it's this kind of work in progress constantly, but it's also a very functional site. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we have a question from Dixon Butler. Is this tool used across all areas of NASA SMD? Yes. And, and SMD is Science Mission Directorate? Science or? Mission Directorate, that's correct. So mission science. Right. Yeah. Um, so the URL that we're talking about is nasawavelength.org. This one's a really straightforward one this time. <laughs> so you guys can go over there and check it out while we're talking about it. Um, and I know I I've heard teachers, uh, they love using NASA resources, but they used to have trouble finding <laughs> all the educational resources for what they wanted because they were all hosted on individual mission sites yeah. for a long time. And so this really brings it together. Exactly. We're trying to make sort of a one-stop shop for the resources so that they're really easy to find, that, you know, you can search for them under a number of different categories, um, which maybe I should share the website now so that people can see sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. So she's going to be screen sharing the uh, upcoming version of the website. Yes. Uh, it looks similar, but there's a few features that you won't see on the live site right now. But for the basic stuff, it should look pretty much the same. Yeah, it, it's close. Um, but as Nicole said, this is the um, this this is not the live version. Um, this the version that you're seeing through the Hangout um, should be live more than likely by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. um, 
because yeah, we want people to start using all of the super, super cool new things. <laughs> so when you hit the home page, what you see, um, you know, very first thing, we have right where this big Solar Week banner is, which is taking place next week, by the way. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have uh, featured collections that this is a rotating banner. Right now it's not rotating because it's a development site. <laughs> so usually we have four banners that are moving back and forth um, so you can see what our featured collections are. And we try to keep those pretty um, topical with ongoing events or events that are getting ready to come up. Um, one of the banners that we have up right now, if this were you know flipping through, um, we have one celebrating the uh, GPM launch that took place uh, the end of February. So we try to keep the featured collections, you know, filled with resources that are related to things that are ongoing and current. Um, we okay. also here's GPM. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm showing the live site. Oh, okay. On my end. So uh, this is the rotating banner. There's the Earth Now hashtag on Twitter. You guys should go mm -hmm. join that. Um, Life Cycles of Stars is featured, and also with uh, warm weather finally coming, activities for camps. Yeah, I saw that earlier. I was going to mm -hmm. ask about that. That's very timely. <laughs> I want that. Yeah, and we had the um, we created that list because the um, American I think it's the ACA American Camp Association recently had their annual meeting, so we wanted to do oh, something. Okay. Yeah, we wanted to do something so that for that event you know, they could show off wavelength a little bit and find resources that would be useful for their audience. So, yeah, we'll probably end up doing another sort of act, um, like a, a, a resource like filled with activities for um, summer months. We tend to do that. We did it last year. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see... Am I still sharing my screen? Yes, yes, I have okay. it up now. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's working. Um, you, we have one easy way that you can search for resources is by audience, and this is the design is an example of something where we wanted to keep people engaged, so it's really easy to find things based on um, age range. So let's say you're looking for elementary school items, middle school items, high school items. You can get to those very easily from the front page. And as you scroll over, you can kind of see where the majority of our resources are located. We have a lot of middle school ones, not as many pre-K, but you know we're working on that. That's that's how it is across astronomy. Um, not yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, having the, having these things is good for us as well because it lets us know where um, we need to improve the collections, so yeah. we can see. Oh, you know, we don't have a lot of resources for pre-K. That's something our developers can work on. And mm -hmm. you know, what resources do we really need to be creating? Um, and it's right here, very easy for everybody to see. Um, featured lists. This is a new area <laughs> that isn't up on the live site yet. Um, and we'll get to this a little bit later on where you can actually create custom lists of resources based on specific things you are doing in the classroom. Um, super, super cool feature. Uh, down here we have featured resources, which the, the featured resources tend to be our most recent additions. Mm, okay. um, we try to rotate those out every couple of months so that we get 40 brand new resources right on the home page that people can click on and go through. Um, and then, if you see down here, another new feature. <laughs> we are adding a blog to um, Wavelength. Excellent. And yeah, we're hoping the blog will be a space where we can feature upcoming events, things like Women's History Month. Um, and the, our first post is all about um, encouraging girls to engage in STEM. And in that, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And in the post, we actually link to resources in our collection that are specifically geared towards engaging uh, girls in STEM in a number of the, um, the forums. So it's astrophysics, heliophysics, planetary, and Earth. So that's going to be a two-parter. Um, the second part of the women, Women's History Month post will come out later this week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you'll see both of them probably by the time all of this goes live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. If you want to go back up just a little bit, I think a great feature I noticed right away is um, you have informal audiences. 
Yes. Um, or informal education, I should say, is one of your audience things you can search by, um, which is really nice because I imagine that not just teachers in formal classrooms are going to use this or are using it, but um, you know, scout leaders. Um, a lot of astronomy is actually informal with um, amateur astronomy and all the different kinds of public events that happen throughout the year with astronomy. And sometimes you just want something that's a little more suited for um, people that are just kind of you know, coming by and engaging sort of, um, you know, on the fly almost, you know, that informal kind of audience. So that's a great audience to be able to search with. Yeah, and we try to be as inclusive as possible and get all sorts of educators onto our site um, using our resources. And we, we do want to encourage informal educators to come on and check out what we have to offer. And what's one of the things that we really took into account, and I'll go through the informal ed resources just as an example, is um, we put a lot of thought into how we allowed people to search through the collection. So mm -hmm. we understand that we have people who are coming in who maybe are looking for very specific items. Um, let's say in this case, informal education, and then let's say astronomy. Um, we have all of these filters here on the left-hand side of the screen that allow you to go through and sort out the collection to really narrow down what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you have the option of, let's say, we'll click astronomy. So you have informal education and astronomy here, and you can see all of these resources. Um, it shows you that we have 82, and you have the option of sorting by relevance, which is based on... Um, wording, but then you also have the option of sorting alphabetically by title and then by date. So mm -hmm. if you want to see the most recent uh, additions to Wavelength, you can sort by date. And in this case, it happens to be the Space Update CD. <laughs> <laughs> so it, that's a nice way of doing it if you're wanting to see what's brand new in a given area. Um, you can also sort by resource type, so if you're wanting an activity you can sort by that. Um, we have the option of sorting by time, which I know whenever I've tweeted about um, activities that take maybe five to ten minutes, those tend to be really, really popular because it takes yeah. you know, very little time to do. But then there's also a cost um, search. So if, if you know that you have like zero budget for materials, you can look for free resources, or you have instructional strategies and then the forums. So if there's very specific things that you're looking for, you can go through, uh-oh, I want my light. Ah! <laughs> some light like the one I used to have, some of you guys have been watching the show a while may remember, but since she's screen sharing, it's, it's not a problem. <laughs> All of a sudden I was, you know, In darkness. into oh. darkness. <laughs> So just <laughs> Yeah, I use the, the the learning time and materials cost all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, the main tend, filter. They tend to be, I think, the most popular filters we have on the site. But then the cool thing is, is that if you go through and do a search, the way we have it set up as well is that let's say you decided that you want to see the informal education items and the activity items, and you don't really care if it's just astronomy. Let's say you want to search everything. You have the option of canceling out yeah. search options. And it's really important. easy to do that. You don't have to do multiple searches. You can just you know, like put as many filters in and then take as many things out and add new ones in. And so it really lets you sit there and play with the resources that come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really user friendly. And then you have much more than lesson plans. I don't if you go back to your side menu and under resource type, I think you could expand it. Oh to, yeah. Because yeah. I think I kind of think of lesson plans just automatically just being a teacher, but um, one thing I was exploring is, you know, right where you are now, the resource, oh, look at all the stuff <laughs> that you have that's more than just a lesson plan or an instructor's guide, you know, music, um, games, projects, all, all kinds of stuff. It's great. Yeah, we do. No matter what you're looking, planetarium show, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, animations, it's really, it's great. So you can, like you said earlier, Morgan, you just kind of get in and it sort of sucks you in and you just end up sort of browsing around to see what's really cool in here. And next thing you know, four hours have gone by. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is that meeting. Darn it. <laughs> so uh, we have another question. 
Oh, sorry, sure. we have another question from Dixon yeah. Butler, uh, and I think you can address this on the left-hand panel. Is there a division between K through 12 and 3 through 6 in the elementary category? That is a good question. So we have primary and upper elementary. Right. Oh, there you so go. You, you can't break it down specifically by you know, individual grades, but we do have, you know, like lower level and the upper level elementary students. Mm -hmm. That's great. So it is flipped. It's not that way in the front page because then you just have to no. make circles for all the subjects. Yeah, we'd have to be circles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Design wise, we had to condense it on the front page. Yeah. yeah. But it, it is in there. It is split like that. Yeah. So we do have. Um, we do have a couple of other options for searching for resources too. Let me just go back to the sum page to show a little bit. If you um, if you know the name of what you're looking for, you can just type that in as a search. We also have the option of browsing the collection, and you can do that. Uh, it, this is maybe oh, I accidentally clicked something. This is maybe on the front page a better place um, if you're really wanting to break down okay. your search. Um, it is broken down here into oh, primary K2, and upper. Three, six, yeah. yeah. So from the front page, that's probably the easiest way to do it if you're wanting that breakdown. Okay. Um, we also have the option from the front page just you know, just for browsing purposes. If you're coming to the site and you don't really know exactly what it is that you're looking for, um, we do have a topic section. So you can go through and click like mathematics. That's another really popular mm -hmm. um, it's a really popular category on the site, and we get a lot of really good feedback whenever um, the social media accounts put anything uh, with math resources up, because I think there are a lot of people out there who are looking for math res resources that kids can relate to, where mm -hmm. it's not just do this equation. You know, this a lot of these resources set up such like real world NASA science situations for the math problems that are being presented. And I think that makes them really, really engaging. Mm -hmm. So th these resources do tend to be pretty popular. Um, yeah, because you have you you probably have a lot more math classes than you have astronomy classes, right? Um, or you may have the geoscience stuff might be more popular because um, that is more po that is a more common class than astronomy yeah. topic astronomy, unfortunately, still. Probably. Yeah. So while we're talking about mm -hmm. the resources. Let's let's take a look at the strand maps. Sure. Oh, I wanted to also mention when you say uh, in the search box, you don't even have to know the title. You just put in like moon. <laughs> yes, you can up. do that too. Yeah. You can just type in very general, yeah. um, very general phrases, and you'll pull up a lot of resources that way as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so yeah. Strand maps. Yeah, this is this is super nerdy teacher time. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get excited. Um, you can get I was really excited when I saw these too. Yeah, yes, when you I saw can, the, 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 the strand maps will also suck you in. Yeah. Um, so all of the resources in the collection are aligned to triple AS benchmarks, and we have these really cool strand maps that let you see exactly which resources are connected to which benchmark. Mm -hmm. So it starts you off with the high school resources up at the top. You can see here on the left-hand side, the 9 through 12, it's 9 through 12th grade. And if you scroll down, you get to middle school, and then you get down into elementary school, and then early elementary. And what's great about these resources, you see the benchmarks. So each one of these little boxes represents a benchmark. And then the arrows represent the connections between benchmarks. And then these numbers over here, the little orange squares, tell you how many resources in our collection are aligned to that particular benchmark. So there was one okay. up at the top that I was looking at earlier. We'll look at this one. If you click on the box, you get the full benchmark, the full wording of the benchmark. You get a list of all of the aligned resources in the NASA Wavelength collection. And for this one, there are a lot. Yeah. 
Um, Technology is essential to science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we have this one covered. Um, and then we also have a box that should read related resources, mm -hmm. but it's resources that are related to this benchmark. Okay. And then we have, oh, and this is, an, this is an ongoing process. <laughs> We're now aligning things to the NGSS standards. Okay. So some of the benchmarks have direct correlations in the NGSS. Not all of them do. So some of these boxes you'll click on and you'll see this information. Some of these boxes, some of these benchmarks don't have that alignment yet. Okay. So if you come in and you don't see that it's part of a process, don't freak out. We're, add, we're adding the information slowly. Well, the states are still working on the adoption. Yeah. Process, so it's... Oh, gosh. We have some time. It's not on fire yet. <laughs> but we want it to be ready right now for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow, a lot of work went into putting that together, the maps. Yes. A lot of information. <laughs> I know. And that's an understatement, I know. I know, but wow, that's just tons like a super concept map. Of everything, yeah. and then, then up at the upper left, I'm looking. It says view research on student learning. Yes. So Ooh. that looks interesting. And if you click here, oh you can gosh, reference more. it. More. <laughs> more citations. <laughs> How much data would you like? Great. <laughs> the more, the better. But Wonderful. then we also have yeah. options in the event that you want to have this entire strand map available to you to see. You have an option to print the map. You can make a PDF of the map, or you can just link to this page so that if you want to share this particular strand map, um, you can do so very easily. But then like one of the things... Like a printer to print the whole thing. Exactly. And we, we do actually... <laughs> Put a big poster on your wall, yes. You can print these on 11 by 17 paper if you have a printer that will do that. Do it. We yeah. have... We have a printer in the office that will do that, and it is, we like to refer to it as the diva printer, <laughs> because it, I'm not kidding, it takes no less than 30 minutes to set this thing up every time we want to print a story and wrap. So. Yeah, uh, I've known printers. May, like <laughs> we would encourage you to use, like, Kinko's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody else do it for you. <laughs> but this, this, um, this format is also, it's another example of where it's really good for the product developers because we can see very clearly, you know, cl we have this particular benchmark covered, but then we have this one that has no resources relating yeah. to it. So that tells us, you know, that that's something we need to work on. That's something, you know, we need to see if we can find um, some resources or get some resources developed that will meet that need so that we're covering everybody's bases. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. We want the teachers to be happy. It's our goal. <laughs> Yay. It's wonderful. It's always a good thing. Hey, do you, you don't need an account with this, do you? Or is You don't need an account to sign to, up or you don't need an account to just browse for the resources. You don't need an account to look at the strand maps. If you want to create lists, you will need an account. Okay, that's what and, I was wondering with that new yeah. And it's really easy to do um, if you're signed out of the site. And I will say that mine looks a little bit different. You know, you see these black bars up at the top. Um, I'm an admin on the account, so I have access to all of this backend stuff that a lot of um, other people won't have access to. But you can log in utilizing, I believe, it's your Facebook credentials, your Google um, credentials. Or I think you can just do it with um, email and password I did creation. it just now while you guys were talking about it. Okay. <laughs> That's how easy it is. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, haven't signed, I hadn't signed up for it before, so I'm actually... Okay. I'm actually, doing, I didn't talk about that. Hmm. I can make lists. Well, I can make lists when it comes out. <laughs> I know. Actually, the, the, the live site does have the option for you to create lists. It's, oh, not, cool. it's just not as super awesome as this version will be. Okay. Um, <laughs> I will hold wait. off. We've been we've been messing around with it for a few months just to make sure that everything's working sure. the way we want it to. Um, so yeah, speaking of the profiles, um, when you create a profile, this is essentially what you'll see. Uh, you have the option of putting a picture in if you want. If you don't want to put a picture in, we have 
a vast array of icons that you can use. Um, Let's see, is this a good field for picking pictures? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it can be whatever nebula you want. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and then you know you have your name, affiliation, if you want to add that information, and then just a quick bio. Um, you're not obligated to put that information in if you don't want to. Yeah. But once you have the information in, um, and when you go through that process of creating a profile, you also have the option of opting in for a monthly newsletter, mm -hmm. which okay. is goes out the first of the month. It's just a HTML newsletter that goes out that has news and events, it has new resources, it has funding opportunities, um, but totally optional. You know, we, we don't make you do that if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, once you're signed up, you're all set to start creating lists. And so what is a list? What does that mean? Um, we'll go to my Solar Week Spring 2014 list since that's coming up next week and the site's going to be really slow, loading it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, developing. <laughs> on sun, bring on the sun. So when you create a list, actually, you know what, I'm going to go to a different list. I'm going to the one I created for Cosmos. Nice. Yeah, did you guys watch Cosmos? Oh, yeah. We were all friends. I was live tweeting. <laughs> and so when you create lists, this is the one I created on Scale in the Universe. Um, I'm laughing because, at the first title. Huh? I'm sorry? I'm laughing at the first title. It's oh. tediously accurate. What is that? It is amazing. If we want to go and look at this, we'll, I'll, I'll explain lists and then we'll go oh, look at it. Oh, I've <laughs> seen that. that one. It is really yeah. it's wild. It's really, really cool. So... The scale in the universe, um, so if you see up at the top, it says it's created by me. Um, and then there's a brief description. You have the option of adding the description when you create the list. And I'll show you how you create the list in just a second. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like once you create one. Um, and you can add any of the resources in the collection to your list. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as you can see up here, the tediously accurate map of the solar system is an external resource. So what this means is that if there are resources within the collection that you really like as a teacher, but you have another website that you think would go really well with those resources and you want to put them in a single location, you can do that. Nice. We're allowing you to do that. Um, it just, on your list, it shows up as an external resource. So that way people will know, and you'll get this little red icon down here as well that lets people know these resources were added separately. They're not peer-reviewed resources. Mm -hmm. They're resources that came from someplace else, but we want everybody to be able to use these lists to the highest advantage. Yeah, they so, can curate their own sense. Exactly. So you have the option of curating the material the way it will be most useful for you. Um, and as you can see, this one has a lot of resources in it. When you create um, lists, and I'll just show you if we, if we click on this one. So here's the resource page. Okay. And each one of the resources, while we're here, we'll discuss this real fast. When you pull up a resource, um, it shows you all of the information about this particular resource. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of data there you have the link that takes you directly to the resource, and then you have this option to add to list. And when you click Add to List, you have the option here of you can put notes in. So if you know that you're going to share a list, if you know that you're going to email the list out to people or share it through, let's say, social media, um, you can add notes about each one of the products that you're adding to the list. So if there's a particular reason why you like it, you can add that information there. Um, when you want to add an item to a list, uh, you click this little button right here that has a pop-up that you can either have the option to create a new list or if you have an existing list, you can add the product to an existing list. If you want to create a new list, this is where you do so. You have, In order to create a list, you have to start off with at least a single product. Mm -hmm. And so you add the list name, you add the list description, 
and you have the option of whether or you not you want the public to be able to see it or if you want it to be kept to yourself. If you click private, nobody else will be able to see the resource. Um, if you click public, what will happen is that for this resource, you see there's a field for user lists, and this shows oh, okay. all of the lists that that resource is, resource is associated with. So because this is new, there's not a lot of you know, there's not a lot of people who have this particular item in list. As time goes on, you'll be able to see other users that have added this information into the list. Cool. Yeah. I just started a learning space list for all the stuff on the show. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I multitask for better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing along. I'm playing along at home. Okay, um, as an aside, because I feel like everybody should see this. Yeah, yeah. A tediously accurate map of the solar system. Just make okay. sure you have a good mouse, according to Nancy. Yes, you're going to do a lot of mouse for this, and I'm not going oh, to go through the entire thing. Oh, this got tweeted thing. a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to go through this entire thing because it takes forever to do. Oh, I see the tiny bar. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. If the moon were only one pixel, this is a scale model of the solar system. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, this is the sun. Huge. Hi, sun. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> There's a lot of space in space, you guys. <laughs> yes, there is, and this it goes on. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> and look at how little it is. Oh my god, it's a dot. So that's Mercury. Oh. Very tiny. Yeah, so your if space, you go through space, your space. Yeah, I I love this note. Like funny hey. comment. <laughs> <laughs> the comments are what make it or else you'd be really bored. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, once you get um the distance from Mars to Jupiter, it's like Oh, forget whoa. the other solar system. <laughs> yeah. Having made having made scale solar systems with food <laughs> Oh no. Outdoors, yeah. All the way around like a mile. <laughs> like, here's a nerd, here's a grit. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, the tediously accurate map of the solar system nice. is not a wavelength resource, right. but it is an awesome resource. <laughs> Maybe we um we can talk a little bit about the the content in wavelength and what it takes for uh, how products end up in wavelength. Talk about the peer review process. Because this was new to me when I started working yeah. with CosmoQuest a couple of years ago. So the, co the company I work for, Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, also oversees the product review process. And the way that the process works is that all of the folks who are working for... Hey, do you want to unscreen share yourself? Oh, <laughs> don't you want to just look at the screen? We can just look at the talking? screen. <laughs> Am I back now? Yeah, you're back. Okay. okay. Talking. So, and now I lost my train of thought. The <laughs> words went away. Um, so all of the people who are producing um, educational products through the missions um, go through this process where if they, you know, if they want their resources to end up in wavelength, they go through the product review. Mm -hmm. And so the, the products are submitted to us on a quarterly basis. Um, so spring, summer, fall, winter, and what we do is we take those resources. They come from all of the forums. So we have the astrophysics, heliophysics, planetary, and Earth resources. Um, we go about finding qualified scientists and uh, teachers to take a look at the products. Um, we give them about a month. They get to go through, really explore the products, watch all the videos, read all of the material that goes along with it, play with any models that might come with, you know, the material that's submitted, and then they write up their reviews for us, and then we have um, a series of calls where we get to talk to all of the reviewers, and they let us know what's working, what's not. Um, if there are things that are definitely not working with a product, then it basically goes through a resubmission process. Mm -hmm. So we try to make sure um, as much as possible that the resources that are in, are in Wavelength are um, accurate, and also user-friendly. Uh, we want to make sure that things are aligned to standards. We want to make sure that teachers can actually use them, that they're not things that 
you know, may sound really good in theory to somebody who's not an educator. Yeah. And, you know, once they get into a classroom, it's like, this is not going to work really well. <laughs> so we want things to work for the teachers. Um, and, and that's how the, the, uh, the process works. And it, it's a lot of fun getting to hear from all of the educators and then all of the scientists as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet you see a lot of, like, really wild creative products because this is all new stuff that people are putting together to go um, with the missions and uh, so I bet you just get to see a, a really great variety of new things coming through. Oh yeah, we do and right now I'm gonna let me find this one that I love and I love it because I was an art history major <laughs> I'm doing science work. <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen again Steve. so you can see it. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I believe in it. We love steam here at the STEM Center, but we're not changing our name yet. <laughs> oh, here we go. And this is a relatively new product oh, all right. called Art and the Cosmic Connection. And it teaches uh, students about visual analysis of um, satellite imagery mm. and also asks students to create their own visual examples. Cool. Yeah, it's it's a really cool product. Um, this one is another one that when we posted on social media, got a lot of activity. People seemed really, really excited about it. Um, but it's a great way to um, get kids using both science skills and art skills at the same time. So, yeah, I just thought I'd share that one real fast. That looks like a lot of fun. So we have uh, a question from Nancy, which I'm going to answer with a screen share. <laughs> uh, Nancy <laughs> asks, are there links to various citizen science projects, such as asteroid mappers, that visitors can reference? Um, and like we were just saying, uh, they tend to the, the products that appear in NASA Wavelink tend to be things that are um, based for teachers and formal educators that have been through peer review. And so citizen science projects may not have necessarily been through peer review. However, I will start screen sharing now. Uh, <laughs> Georgia pointed this out to me earlier. We're, we're happy about this when you type in citizen science. Um, science. Yeah. As a topic, you get a bunch of citizen science related lessons. And hey, Terra Luna is a beautiful one. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, that's our that's the moon lesson that goes along with moon mappers. Um, so that that and then we've got a whole bunch of other lessons that go with uh, S cool. I know that's like a cloud monitoring citizen science program. So mm -hmm. students cloud observations online. Uh, land and water temperature, birds, all kinds of different citizen science projects. These aren't the projects themselves. These are the lessons that go along with it. Yeah. I, I, I know that's the, true for us. I think that's the same for, for a lot of these, is that um, so that you can bring, it really makes it easy to bring, for teachers to bring citizen science into the classroom. And you know what you can do? What? what, what? You, can, you can make a list. Ah! <laughs> that links to the citizen science page. I'm letting you start that one. <laughs> Make it happen. I'll start, I'll start clicking. Yeah, you absolutely. Power. You can do that. So you can find citizen science themes. There are exactly 34 at the moment. <laughs> um, which is something we, we think is really cool, is, is getting citizens, getting, making citizen science easily usable for teachers. Um, Morgan, I don't know if you have any other comments on the cool citizen science stuff that's coming through. Um, not, in the, not in the products. Um, we do promote a lot of the citizen science stuff if it doesn't go through review. Um, a lot of times it does end up on that monthly newsletter. Nice, okay. Um, because that one's a little more flexible and, you know, what, what we can put on there. And sometimes the citizen science stuff doesn't, it doesn't work as well for the review process. Mm -hmm. right. So right. they just tend to not go through. Um, not because they aren't good resources, but because they just they don't really work well with that sort of um, analysis. So we do definitely promote them. Um, if they're not located on Wavelength, we are promoting them usually through the, uh, the newsletter and oftentimes through the social media accounts as well. And certainly if there are really good resources out there, um, that relate to NASA science, I would love to know about them because I'm always looking for ways to make connections with Wavelength and promote um, more information through the social media sites. Awesome, awesome. Yes, it's all about sharing. 
following us on Wavelength if you know. <laughs> <laughs> we were goofing at each other. Yeah, we were goofing a little bit earlier on Twitter. <laughs> Because I'm in the future. <laughs> yes, you live in the future. <laughs> oh, uh, we also had a, a good comment back about the math stuff from Bonnie Murray. Uh, or Murray. Uh, glad to hear that. Uh, math weakness, rather than lack of interest in science, is often a reason kids don't pursue careers in STEM. And I think, like you said, mm -hmm. having math activities that tie into Earth and space science um, makes it relevant in a way that some generic yeah. number problem wouldn't do. Yeah, and I mean, I remember when I was a student, you know, in, <laughs> in math classes, and I remember having the conversation with people, you know, as an angsty 14-year-old, like, I'm never going to use this. <laughs> Why am I ever going to use Algebra 2? This is stupid. <laughs> it's not. There's a reason to use it. Yeah. We have all of these reasons on our site. And I got plunged into darkness again. I, I saw it happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also we have a question from Nancy. Is there a means by which a lay person can help vet content, etc.? I'm thinking maybe if they want to give feedback too. If you want to give feedback on wavelength or resources that are on wavelength, mm -hmm. um, there is. I'm not sharing my screen. Let me go back and share my screen because <laughs> there's a handy button. Mm -hmm. And it will start sharing slowly. Um, I see it. Okay. Sometimes there it's goes. a little temperamental, yeah. Mm. So there is this handy feedback button. Oh, there we go. Over on the right side. And if you click on it, you have an option for sharing okay. ideas, asking questions, reporting an issue, write a praise. Um, and you can submit all of this information to us. And it lets us know, you know, what we're doing right, what things could be improved, what things you would want to see on Wavelength. Um, you know, we definitely want user feedback. Okay. Uh, the, you know, we, we don't want to be, you know, just talking to the ether or putting content out to the ether. We really want people to let us know, you know, what, what things they like, what they don't, um, because that makes us, that helps us create a better site. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of that, we have the blog. Yay. That's Which starting. Is not live. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking for it on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon you will have access to this blog where you can read all about Women's History Month and engaging girls in STEM because that's our first um, it's our first post. Very cool. Uh, it's a two part post and throughout um, you'll find links to specific material that um, helps engage girls in uh, STEM. And we have a comment section. Cool. Yeah, so yeah. we definitely want people to take advantage of that comment section and let us know the, your tips and tricks, um, things okay. that you like to do in the classroom, your, you know, we want to know your thoughts, your feelings, um, you know, the content that we're posting. So we definitely want the users to engage in the site. Um, we want it to be not just you know something you come to and click around on. We want it to be interactive. We want you guys to have a good time. We're super excited. Very cool. And I think you all should totally <laughs> use the praise button because not enough people use feedback. And I know I'm one of them. Not enough people use feedback to say good things. We usually just complain about stuff. So praise too. Yeah. We well, do we, get nice comments though. We've that is got, good. We've gotten a lot of you know we really like this. <laughs> Good. Um, I remember, so I, I was at NSTA last year, mm -hmm. yeah, last year, uh, at the, the NASA booth, and just the way teachers talk about how much they love NASA resources, um, <laughs> the, the praise is definitely out there. They were, they were happy to tell us in person <laughs> how much they love it. So that That's was cool. what we want to hear. So, um, and, and I, I, believe, I will not be at this NSTA, but I believe there will be a NASA SMD booth again? Yes, there will. Good, good. So well, if anyone's going to the They're just starting team, the planning for that. Yes, yes. I've been seeing the emails. I'm like, oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Pamela will be there. Pamela Gay will be there from Cosmo. Oh, good. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, there will be, if you're going to NSTA, National Science Teachers Association meeting in Boston, definitely check out the NASA booth because they put out tons and tons of free resources. And it's like a <laughs> mountain of resources. <laughs> Yeah, and and, la and they had it separated. It was it was like by age. It was like a gradient <laughs> across oh, the table. Yeah. 
by 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 age. It was really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, because we did the we did the one pagers last year for yes. elementary, middle, and high school. Yep. Yep. So then and all I know, the resources were grouped by that and spread across the table. Like and I know we will have um, there will be wavelength specific material good. there as well this year. Good. Good. Nice. Yeah. They, we, there was a screen up where people could play with it. And at one point, like, no one had a computer. I ended up sticking my laptop into it. And <laughs> Here, here's my laptop. It's one way one. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, we have um, another question from Lily. I know it's probably a slightly different group, but will searching, include, will searching here include all the NASA education programs? For instance, I've used Cosmic Times and the Chandra info in my classroom. Do you know if stuff like that is tied in, or is that external? I believe Cosmic Time, I think both of those okay. are included in our collection. Okay. Yeah, um, I see Cosmic Time. I just put yeah. in Cosmic Time and I got... Mm -hmm. I certainly know Cosmic Times has been through the review. <laughs> okay, okay. Cosmic Times has been through the review. Uh, yeah, if it's been through review, I mean, a lot of... Some of them are just the, the, like, the single page information with the big pretty picture on it. And some of them are, are like full lesson plans. Um, and there are, are certainly a lot of um, Chandra X-ray products on here. Just doing a really quick search. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if there's a specific product that you're looking for that you don't see for some reason, you're more than welcome to email me about it, mm -hmm. and we can look into um, you know why it may not be on the site. It could be that it's something that hasn't gone through product review. Um, or, I mean, there could be a particular reason. Sometimes we have things that were on the site and that are taken down because links are broken and, um, you know, we're trying to fix things like that, which, you know, it, it, that, that sort of thing happens when you have a collection of thousands of resources. But one of the nice things about this particular um, site and the way that the back end is set up is that um, this, all, all of the links are archived which means that it really lessens okay. the chance of broken links. Okay. So the vast majority of the time that works, um, occasionally we do have things that get broken and that aren't archived. So if there's something that should be there that isn't, um, that's something I can always look into and see if there's a reason why it's not on our site. And if it should be on our site, then we can get it on our site because we want everything that should be on our site on our site. Yeah. <laughs> everything cool. All the cool things. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah, I know we were very careful with Terra Luna. I, I was very strict. I'm, I'm still very strict with Terra Luna and making sure. <laughs> I'm like, don't change the Dropbox folder, anyone. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. I do that to That's the danger of collaborative products. I know. I, I, I finally like laid down the law in one of our meetings. I'm like, do not touch this folder. <laughs> Ever <laughs> <Without> checking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had you know. to go through that. Yes. Because <laughs> we screwed that up a few times. But we gave you guys the link that doesn't change. <laughs> yeah. You know. Hey. Yes. So. We try. We try. Um, Morgan, you mentioned a newsletter that you're going to start. And how often um, are you getting new things on the site? And is that we just kind of, is it pretty regularly? that It's pretty it's regularly. Um, usually... Yeah. Usually the the large uh, the large editions of new resources come directly after the product reviews. Mm -hmm. So yeah. At least, yeah, so at least four times a year we have pretty significant additions to the site. Um, okay. We also run interim reviews. So if people have products that need to be approved very quickly for, let's say, workshops or you know pro professional development uh, reasons or there's an event that's coming up really soon that they you know that the products need to be reviewed quickly um, we do those throughout the year but they can be kind of um, th there's not a set cycle for them they can be a little unpredictable is the word that I was looking for <laughs> <laughs> that's why you need the newsletter so you can <laughs> get updated on these things yeah so the yeah. newsletter doesn't the newsletter usually doesn't have all of the new resources in it, but it has, you know, a collection that we think would be useful for the community. Um, the newsletter, as I said before, also has things that maybe necess didn't necessarily go through the product review. Um, for example, things that are outreach materials that maybe aren't necessarily items that need to be reviewed for inclusion on Wavelength. 
Mm -hmm. um, we'll put those resources out from time to time as well. Great. Uh, we have a comment from Bonnie Murray saying that uh, maybe you know what this acronym stands for because I don't. NASA LARC, L A R C S M D will be. Langley. At the... Thank you. Okay. NASA <laughs> Langley. <laughs> NASA LARC SMD will be at the regional NSTA meeting in Richmond, Virginia. So there you go. People in my old home state, <laughs> if you're going to Richmond, Virginia. Uh, of course, Virginia is not yet signed on to NGSS that we know of. You guys have the, the, the SOLs. <laughs> they call them the SOLs, the Standards of Learning. And I giggle oh. every time <laughs> I hear it. So teachers in Virginia, check out uh, the, the booth at the Richmond uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> They can help you out. Um, so yeah, sorry, I had to bring that up. <laughs> um, we are uh, just about on the hour, so uh, I'm going to, uh, what I'd like to do uh, is, um, Morgan, do you have any other major topics that you wanted to hit? Um, the other things that you can find on the NASA Wavelength site, just mm -hmm. very quickly because we didn't go over them in depth, um, we do have a section on data and images okay. that um, shows you, and I'll screen share really quickly. So yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because this is super useful, and the, um, the participants can go and check it out. Um, when you're on the site, if you click data and images up the top, it gives you a chart, and the chart is divided into introductory, intermediate, and advanced, so depending on um, the level of your learners, okay. it shows you where to go to find actual NASA data nice. to use as part of your lessons. So you can scroll through and you can see they have handy little um, symbols next to them that let you know which forum they're from. So, you know, Earth, we have helioplanetary, yeah. and then astrophysics. Yeah. And so you can scroll through and you can see where you can go to find actual data to use in your classroom. And that's a real fun chart to just sit around. It, that is another place where you can end up, you know, yeah, yeah. four hours later. <laughs> there. The data system alone. stuff has sucked up hours of my time. And that's <laughs> one listing on here. <laughs> and so then the other thing I wanted to mention just really quick is the news and events calendar. Yes, yeah. And this is where um, we try to keep track of as, as many um, NASA education activities as possible in a single location. So it's a Google calendar. Um, that's the basis for it. So if you want to Subscribe, subscribe to it. <laughs> you can just click on the link at the bottom and you can subscribe to every activity <laughs> that is going on. Um, you also have the option, you can click on individual things. Like if you click on Solar Week, um, you know, it gives you the description. Nice. You can click and this will just take you to a Google layout so you can see all of the information. And then if you want to save it directly to your Google Calendar, if you just want to do an individual event, not the entire calendar, you can do that. Um, and we keep to tr we try to keep this as up to date as possible. So every couple of days, I'm going in and adding as needed. So yeah, that's that's a great place to find out what's going on in the world of NASA education. Awesome, awesome. Hey, very cool. All right, thank you. Fabulous. That was, yeah, that was an awesome tour of all the fun stuff. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm gonna do great. a quick. Uh, business end of the show, and then we can end with um, uh, maybe you can end with we can end with final thoughts about wavelength. Um, first, I want to uh, I noticed a comment somebody who came in late and is afraid they missed the whole thing. It's you did not miss the whole thing because you can go back and watch it. Um, if you missed the beginning of this, came in part way through, you can you can go to the YouTube video link or the event page and watch it from the beginning. So this will be archived for as long as the internet exists. So <laughs> same with all our hangouts there, archived forever and ever. Yeah. And, uh, and now we have a learning space page on CosmoQuest where we link to all the, all the past shows, so you can see it there. Um, okay, so for the upcoming schedule, Friday we have the Weekly Space Hangout hosted by Fraser Kane, where he will be going over, uh, he and a group of science journalists and people who pretend to be journalists like me, uh, <laughs> I might actually join this week, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I blog, but I don't, I'm not a real journalist. 
Uh, we will, but we will talk about our favorite, our favorite space stories um, from the week. We talk about our favorite astronomy stories, and uh, you can check that out at noon Pacific. <laughs> 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 You've been silly. <laughs> noon Pacific on Friday. Um, Sunday night's the virtual star party because of the daylight savings change in the United States. It's a bit later than it was before. I believe it was actually. And also, I think they made it a little later so that y'all could watch Cosmos and then watch the virtual <laughs> star party. So you know, That's just amazing. Unless, unless one of the guys, you know, comments in the next five seconds telling me what time it is, I will <laughs> keep. Stay tuned to the virtual star party uh, um, page on Google Plus uh, for the actual time. I think last week it was like eight or nine. Um, PM Pacific, but it's it's sometime when it's dark and after Cosmos. So yeah, totally check out the virtual star party on Sunday night after you're done watching Cosmos. Um, and then Monday is Astronomy Cast with Fraser and Pamela, and they record an episode live on Hangouts, and then we'll stick around to answer your questions. And then we come back around next week uh, to Learning Space, which I think is still going to be at the same time for a little while longer. Mm. And it's okay. Global Astronomy Month. <gasps> oh right, we're talking to Mike Simmons. Yay! We're yeah, talking to Mike Simmons Simmons. about Global Astronomy Month. So uh, you can find out all the fun things you should be doing in April to celebrate astronomy. Mm -hmm. That'll be next week's episode of Learning Space. So yay! Those are all the things. Awesome. Um, yeah, Morgan, do you have any any last <laughs> parting thoughts about wavelengths? <laughs> Come check out our site. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, we're really excited to bring um, all of these resources to teachers, and, you know, we've worked very hard to create the site. I think it looks awesome. Yeah. When um, is the new, the new version going to officially roll out? We're hoping the new version will roll out earliest tomorrow, latest Friday oh. or Monday. Okay. Um, they wanted to roll it out today. We were afraid that it was going to end up knocking the site down for this <laughs> presentation. Everything. So we decided to hold okay. off on that. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. Could be wise, yes. Could be a very wise choice. Yeah. So so we're right. hoping to have it up yeah. um, within the next couple of days. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Well I started my list, so well, I'm I know my list. <laughs> I share my lists on the Twitters. Get your lists going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great, great. All right. Well thank you very much, Morgan. Thanks. That was awesome. You're very welcome. Yay. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.